a Greenpoint Williamsburg Public Affairs presentation. This is Neighborhoods Today. Welcome to Neighborhoods Today. I'm Vic Mahan. Today we're talking with Ralph Carano, the editor of the Greenpoint Gazette, which is the voice of Greenpoint. Ralph Carano has been the editor of this wonderful newspaper for 25 years. But more than that, he is our local historian. And he's been involved in many of the innovations that have affected Greenpoint. He's very familiar with its past. So we, we have a wonderful opportunity to sit down and talk with him and explore some of those things. And, and let me welcome you again, Ralph Carano, to Neighborhoods Today. It's a pleasure to have you with us again. Pleasure being here. Now, let me just start off with something and throw something right out on the table, is that Greenpoint is one of the communities, or one of the few communities, that has its own flag. And I understand that you were instrumental in having that flag made all right, and flown in Greenpoint. Would you tell us a little of the background on that for the people here in Brooklyn and Greenpoint? Well, uh, it uh, happened uh, with three. Myself, another fellow named Joe Savino, and Pat DeCivio. We're sitting in a diner um, at that time on Morgan Avenue. It was a diner. And uh, we were saying things were too quiet. Why, what can we do to make some interesting sub something come about? You weren't about. trying to start any trouble. No, no trouble. It's just that things were so quiet, it was boring and dull. So I had, uh, in a joking way, I said, Joe, you know, we have a state flag, we have a country flag, a federal flag. We have a city flag. We, you know, why don't we have a, a, a community flag, a neighborhood flag, not just a Brooklyn flag. Let's go by communities. So every community in Brooklyn can have a flag and be proud, and uh, when they have a parade and an event, they can have their we flag can, we can flag next to Old Glory, right. the American flag. And you we know. can all hang one from our own windows. Right, anymore. right. I mean, people just love the idea of decoration of nice flags well, flying nice to and identify everything. your right. own community. Too. We had a bicentennial parade in Greenpoint, the largest parade ever held in, 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 the, in 1976. Uh, we had about 5,000 marching for a neighborhood, a yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, wonderful. And then we had, uh, of course, it rained that day. We had the Navy Band, U.S. Navy. Yeah, we had, they, they contributed an orchestra to our uh, uh, bicentennial uh, parade. Was that the first time we flew the And flag? we flew the Greenpoint flag Was that the there. first time we flew it? Well, I don't think it was the first time, but I think it was. It was the first big parade. It was the first big parade. And of course, the, the Greenpoint Savings Bank has the Greenpoint flag in their meeting hall in the basement. It's been uh -huh. there for uh, many years uh -huh. since we started. Now, what are the flag. colors on that? We don't have a, we don't have a, a picture well, here now. Well, it has, uh, it has 1658, the date, I guess, when Greenpoint was uh, more uh, born or something. And it has gold, it has green. It's all gold. It's mostly gold, isn't it? It's gold and yeah, green? Yeah, gold and green and white and black. You know, okay. has, of course, the peace leaves, and it has the monitor in the water industry and homes. You know, it has like factories, and then it has private homes, and it has the monitor in the water. Okay, because that's all important to us, because we are a residential, and also we are a uh, industrial. industrial community. But not only that, more so than that, is that Greenpoint is historically important because of the monitor, which was the first ironclad ship, and I know you're going to tell us a little bit about that, because it sort of changed the course of naval history, all right? After that, there weren't too many wooden ships. Tell us a little bit about the Monitor, because it was so important in the Civil War. Well, during the Civil War, it seems that the Merrimack was a wooden boat that they put steel plates over it. So it wasn't a real steel No, it ship. wasn't a steel, real steel ship. And they were running the blockade, going to get arms from England. England was supplying the South with weapons to fight, uh, the, you know, the North. They, they were interested in the South winning for some uh -huh. reason. I don't know why. But, and so 
the government, uh, Lincoln, I guess, the government decided they needed uh, a, an ironclad ship that would be stronger than the Merrimack, so to break this uh, system. Just so a box of case, so it was like something know. like the stealth bomb. It was yeah, the latest that technology like at this, that time. Yeah, the stealth ship. Right. Uh, so they they hired uh, Ericsson. Uh, oh, the great John Ericsson. Yes. John Ericsson from Sweden, and he's an engineer and designing this you know, ship, and it was built in Greenpoint on Quay Street. Now, that's all the way the, down on, by the river. That's yeah, right by, 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 right by the water. Calia Street, the extension of Calia Street the by the water. The Continental Iron Works. The Continental Iron Works was there, and there, in fact, Greenpoint, they had a lot of uh, industry uh, by the water, you know, iron works and rope factories, everything that oh, dealt right. with shipping that's right. that's they right. had in Greenpoint. Right. So there were a lot of jobs in the main street was Franklin Street, not Manhattan Avenue. That's correct, because some of the old buildings I still see have some of the old shipwright type of uh, yes, yes, carpets, yes. and uh, yeah. they also have the widow's watches on Milton Street and so on, right, like that. Right, right, right. right. Franklin yeah. was the main see, So right. anyway, uh, of course, the Merrimack and, and the uh, Monitor, they had a battle, but it was a draw anyway. Nobody won, really. Uh, I don't want to say that Greenpoint won, but, but we did. We really draw. did. We really <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really did. No, yeah, there were tough people in those days. You oh, know, right, they're not right, like right, the, right, right. They're real tough people. Right. I understand that the Monitor is one of the only, or maybe one of the two or three uh, monuments, national monuments that are underwater. Yeah. Okay. Because I think they tried to raise it and it couldn't be raised yeah. and someone like that. But it has such a, a great history. Greenpoint is sort of proud. That the monitor was uh, was part of that was part of that history, and we're noted for a number of other things here in Greenpoint, and I understand that something to do with the the flag of Greenpoint. No, something to do with the carousels. What was the story? Oh you yeah, the, you you know we were known as the carousel capital of the world. Oh, we boy. had all these wood carvers that carved these That's horses uh -huh. for the famous uh, merry-go-rounds, uh, Coney Island merry-go-rounds. A lot of them were built in Greenpoint. Do you know what I saw the other day? I saw it in, I guess, the magazine section, that they had these and they were selling them as antiques for uh, enormous prices because they were so well carved and well painted, the horses for the carousel. Oh, yeah, they're collectors. Tremendous collector's items today. Oh, yes, yes. A lot better than some of the stuff that uh, Kennedy was selling, Jacqueline Kennedy. <laughs> uh, uh, people, what made me laugh is that somebody, uh, the, the beetle that uh, died, his John wife, Lennon. John, John Lennon. They were, she was trying to sell his bed, <laughs> so she br brings it to this uh, auction house, Christie's, I believe, and nobody really bid on the bed. Then she got two bids. One was forty dollars, and she thought she would get at least three hundred thousand. Three hundred. Nobody you know, wanted John Lennon's bed. Nobody wanted the bed. And so they withdrew it from the auction. Oh, oh they, they should. They should have had one of our so carousel you see, horses. The carousel horse would bring at least a half a million dollars, uh -huh. those original <laughs> merry-go-round horses. <laughs> oh, that's so good. But uh, following along with that, I, I, I know that there were a lot of uh, artists and craftsmen in Greenpoint. At one time, a lot of artists came here, and uh, shipwrights and, and carvers. But also, we had uh, uh, casting uh, and ironworks here, oh, yeah. where there was that, that wonderful monument of the region of the flag on Iwo Jima. Yes. All right, and that was all. That was done in the foundry in Greenpoint. Yes. That was so. Even so the World's Fairs, the two World's Fairs, 1939 and 1964, most of those things are structured here in Greenpoint and cast in Greenpoint, including the the main theme, the Trilon and Perisphere. Is that of right? Is that right? Well, that, yeah, that was they a were made, very very big project. They, yeah, they're made in Greenpoint right. because Greenpoint had. Uh, maybe 20 different foundries here. Uh -huh. Oh yes, they are very famous for doing the iron, iron uh, work. It's, it's a unique community because of the Newtown Creek, which pretty much comes all the way around on what would be the northern part, okay, separating Brooklyn from Queens, really, and coming around. And uh, Yeah, but the funny thing is we are on Long Island. Greenpoint is on Long Island. Greenpoint's uh, on Long Island. And yeah. Some of the historians call it New Utrecht, okay, mm -hmm. the old, old New Utrecht. You know, the Long Island Historical Society uh, is in Brooklyn, of course. Brooklyn, too. <laughs> right. 
It's in Brooklyn on Pierpont Street. That's correct. Of course, now they changed the name to the Brooklyn Historical Society. It's only recently that they changed the name, maybe two or three years now that the name is, but they still use the Long Island Historical Society also. Uh -huh. So that's a nice place for somebody to visit if they want to read old newspapers, uh, whatever. And they had a wonderful, wonderful display about five or six years ago on Greenpoint, and particularly about the Monitor, yes. which is such a, a, an outstanding uh, contribution from this community to the history of the United States. So that was, that was interesting. I understand not only that, but you've invented a cocktail for oh, Greenpoint. Yeah. Okay, we have a, everybody, I see that you have a, we have a Manhattan cocktail and we have yeah, a Yeah, we have a martini. We have a martini. Now we can say we, we have a Greenpoint cocktail. Uh, Greenpoint and the cocktail. secret recipe <laughs> is, <laughs> the secret recipe. you're going to have it because okay. I want everybody to participate in this experiment okay. of seeing if this is a worthy uh, drink for, for people to enjoy. Okay, and particularly on special holidays. On right. special holidays. Right. Okay. Tell us the secret ingredients. The secret ingredients. First of all, you have to have this green drink called Midori. Midori? Is Midori. M-I-D-O-R-I. Midori. Midori is, now, is, is that, a peach-tasting liqueur. Okay. So you have to have it green. It has to be because it's oh, Midori, green. Oh, Midori is green. It's green. No, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. That sounds Japanese. No, is it not? It sounds like Japanese, yeah. yeah. Midori. So it's Midori. a green, green. It's a peach flavor. Peach flavor. All right. And... Uh, what else? Then you put in uh, rum. I'm not going to specify the amounts, but what it contains is rum, uh, vodka, Midori, of course, squeezing a green lime into it. And, and oh, a green, oh, everything seems to be green. green. Okay. And a, uh, you could use a green, a green olive, a green lime. Green lime and an yeah. olive. An olive, right. And an olive with the yeah. lime. Yeah, the, both. Put both. I love olives and I love lime also. Okay. With the, the olive. The English, anything optional? The English are called <laughs> limeys because... Uh, they had scurvy on all their ships, and they found uh, somebody informed them that if they were lacking in vitamin C, so that would prevent the scurvy. So they started to load the the merchant ships with lime, with and that they they, they used, sailors were using the the lime to prevent scurvy. And that's how they got the term. That's, that's how, how they, they got the name term, term limey. limey. And yeah. we cut out the skewer, no scurvy from then on. Yeah, and the Germans had, had the, the term Jerry's, they were called. You know why? No. Because when their bombs came down, they made a sound like jerry, like a jerry sound. Is that right? Okay. How do you like that? I think that's terrific. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, let's continue with this, okay? Yeah. We'll continue with this in just a moment. Hey, this is a funny show well, we're here. We got we're going to take a short break, and we'll comedy. be right back with Ralph Carano and get some more insights into the mystery and the wonder of Greenpoint. Thank you. He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. I never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. And now we're back again to continue our very interesting conversation with Mr. Ralph Carano. We last, we just last left you with you mentioning how the Jerry's got their name. How, how, did, that, how did that come about? Oh, the Jerry's would shoot these bombs down and this bomb would make a sound like jerry, right, no, like a crazy? jerry sound. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? And that's the, why they call them the jerrys. Right. Listen, let me, if I may, just sort of we regress a little bit because uh, you had come up with some ideas for the flag, and I wanted to explore that a little bit more with you because it's such a good idea. And I know, uh, how, did, how, did, uh, how did you come about with the design? The design, how did that come about? That was, I know what it is, you told us what it is. But how did you come about getting the design for the flag? Well, when we approached the editor of a local uh, Greenpoint uh, Weekly Star paper that existed at that time, it was owned by the Long Island Press, and the editor, McCarthy, he was so happy that we had this idea of having our own community neighborhood flag. And he said, we could run a contest, we could uh, have all the school children submit designs, no adults, just let the young people... Well, that's a good idea. Young people uh, submit designs. Yes, that's And good. then, after we got about 70 or 100 designs, we eliminated those that were real bad. 
and 60 designs were on view in the basement of the Greenpoint Bank, and we had religious leaders, we had politicians, community leaders, and some regular people, that activists. So they really, they really gathered around the flags. So These were the judges. They, they were the judges. Uh -huh. They all had pads and gave each design a number from one to something, you know, which number was, right. you know, whatever, one to ten or whatever. And so they voted we, on it? Yeah, they voted. Oh, isn't that so great? now we came down to three, three uh, numbers that were kind of close. Three, three, three designs that were close. Now, these were all in color? The, the what? The, the designs. The designs were in color, in color of course, right. yeah. yes. And children did all these designs in their classrooms. Is that that right? was a classroom project. Now, that was all the children from the local schools? All the schools in Greenpoint. Oh, they, the, the, the teachers got involved because they were happy to have something interesting sure, a nice project. for the kids to a nice do. Sure, nice project, something project. personal too, right? right? So we had come down to three designs, and uh, the editor suggested that we put them on the front page of the paper and have the people decide which one now, isn't that a great idea? Three. Isn't yeah. that a great idea? So he had this coupon design number one, number two, number three, and the one that won, of course, she, the girl received $100, and nice. number two design got $50. I understand. See. And so... Then, of course, I had to go to a flag company, bring this design, and have the first flag made, because he, he had a promise from Mayor Lindsay that he would dedicate that flag. So the mayor at that time the was mayor, The mayor came down to McCarran Park on, the, on June 7, 1967. Oh, boy. How and about that? So what happened? We had all different TV stations send their photographers down to put on the news. For that that night news yeah. about the community flag, okay. the only one in America. Oh, the only um, community flag in America. Okay. Yeah. And the mayor was coming in to the, do the dedication. The mayor came with a helicopter, and he landed in the adjacent section where we were. Dramatically, got out of his helicopter. Now, where, 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 what, where did he McCarran land? Park. McCarran Park. McCarran okay. Park. Right. Because the flagpole, of course, uh, the night before the flagpole that we, the flag was going to be raised on didn't have a cord, so we got the Park Department to install a cord the same day that it would be raped. Oh, boy. I had to sleep, I had to <laughs> stay in my car all night, all night, to make sure nobody would steal that rope, because <laughs> the, flag, the rope was not locked. I see. See, so I, had, I didn't go tough, to sleep, right, tough because the flag up I had to line, see right? that, that that rope was there, so we wouldn't have a disaster. Oh, boy, okay. So when the mayor came... And, and he did from, come, from the, yeah, Oh, sure. Before he came, for two days, they cleaned every street, <laughs> like, so clean, Greenpoint never looked so good, <laughs> because the state senator, Chester Straub, oh, yes, Chester had, a, Straub. had to go with the mayor on a tour of Greenpoint. Isn't that wonderful? You know, they had to look at everything, right, right. and he got the, uh, he had to make sure that the streets were ex spotless, That's you know. Wonderful. That, was, that right. was the only time uh, Greenpoint was benefit. so clean, right. spotless. That we got. Good yeah. So right. when he came, we had a few speeches. There were hundreds of people in the park. It was a beautiful day, spring day, and, you know, June 7th. So anyway, all the TV cameras, all the channels were there because they were going to make a big thing on the news. And we would have a lot more communities getting involved and having a contest and then having a flag so made. promoting other communities yeah. to do the same and having, thing. having the mayor or right, something. Because it was a good idea. And it, it was a like great a, idea. Yeah, catch yeah. on and get a little more. So they could have it. more pride in their neighborhood. Sure. You could have an East New York flag, a Harlem flag. You can have a, a Bensonhurst flag. You know. Right. I think they, they, they would love that. They would sure. love it. And of course, the flag has to represent the community, like the, the community. Greenpoint flag had the monitor there, industry right. and homes and Correct. peace sleeves and everything else. Oh, right. So that was a good representation well, sure. for, for... Covered the, all the aspects of the community. Right, yeah. The number two uh, winner, uh, which was the one that the girl that received $50 for the her contribution, was something with an eagle in it, you okay. know. But I guess, you know, they, they decided 
there are a lot of eagles around the world. Every sure. country has an eagle as a symbol. Right, 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 Poland right. has an eagle. Right. Germany has an right. eagle. But that wouldn't be yeah. too far afield. America has an eagle. Right. That wouldn't be too far afield in, in, in Great yeah. Point, yeah. Uh, having the, an eagle because of the Polish eagle. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, well, that's true. But, uh, right. but anyway, and anyway uh, sure. the flag we have is on display in the Greenpoint Bank meeting hall. And about eight different... Uh, uh, copies were made, you know, the regular size, uh -huh. not small ones. Uh, eight different copies. One woman who was the head of this organization, the Winthrop Civic, she ordered one for her uh, organization. Uh -huh. You know, and the undertaker, uh, Ms. Galski, he ordered one uh, because uh, when his time was up as the head of the Greenpoint Civic Council, right. he was supposed to get a watch. He, he wanted a flag instead. Greenpoint flag. If one wanted to see the flag today, where would they go? Well, I mean, I have the one that was burnt in, a, in a, an accident in the bank, me in the bank storage room. Now I got a new one. Uh -huh. I have the scorched one, the original one that was raised, because I was the president of the historical society. But anyway, uh, the bank has one there. It's the always bank. on display it's in their meeting there. room there. Right. Yes, it's there. Would you, I'm sure you would though, let me just ask you to do this though, would you recommend to other communities to maybe try something like that, to have their own flag, because it's a bit of personal community pride. Absolutely. A great, great It would like, be a uh, great thing to, to the get kids. the community excited and get the, some project that would be of interest to the whole sure. community. Right. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. All the cameras were there, and on the news that day, we didn't have one of those cameras have the news for us to see about the community that had the first flag because the Israeli war broke out that day. Oh boy. June 7th, 1967. Oh, why is he so well? I can't forget that date because I, I, I was so disappointed that we didn't get this project pushed into other areas so that people would get an idea right, to do it. Right, right, you know? right, right. So, you know, I, 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 I see someday that a lot more communities would decide that they need something to, to, to inspire them in their own neighborhoods. Okay, that's a great idea, and it's a wonderful story, by the way, it's a great story. Another thing I think that you know something about is that there was a plaque, a plaque in commemoration of the Monitor being built at the Continent Lion Works all those years ago yeah. with the auspices, under the auspices of Abraham Lincoln. I understand that you have that plaque. Yes, I have the you plaque. Tell me a little story about the plaque because well, I know it was missing for a while. Yeah, all of a sudden was the it was, it was missing. It wound up in Connecticut. Somebody took it off the building oh, of the Continental Line, and you know it disappeared. Uh, this Mike Leiden, who uh, aficionado, uh, he, he has almost oh, the monitor. Yes, I know of I, the I, monitor. He yes, has he a is, license plate that oh, says he is monitor. The authority. He is the, he's the a authority. big authority on the he monitor. He is the authority. He is yeah, lecturing he is. In the one. Library of Congress. And the the, on the Navy even has him lecturing and displaying some of his uh, right. memorabilia yeah. that he has. So he came over to the Greenpoint Gazette and he said, "You know, the plaque has been missing. I have a picture of it." Maybe we can publish it on the front page of the paper. Maybe somebody has it laying around, and they don't know what they got. Oh, so, so. so we put it on the front page of the Gazette that, that this was missing, and the Historical Society of Greenpoint. At that time, we had this organization, uh, and I was the president. And one day, a fireman comes carrying this package. Wow. And he said, uh, I read the Gazette that, that the plaque was missing. We have had this plaque for a number of years in our kitchen. Oh, no, the fireman. No kidding. Yeah, Where did this guy kitchen. come from? The Greenpoint uh, Firehouse. Oh, the Greenpoint Firehouse. Greenpoint Avenue. Okay. You know, Greenpoint oh, Fire. Okay. So they had it in their kitchen. He didn't. He didn't know what to do. He saw it in the Gazette and he brought it to us. Right. And he, says, he didn't say how he got it. He said something about uh, that somebody brought it from Connecticut. Oh, okay. How it got in Connecticut, I don't know. I mean, you know. Right. Uh, maybe somebody bought it, some kind of flea market or something. I have no idea. Okay, that was a bit but, of a mystery, though. But huh? he said, yeah, wow. it was a mystery. But we, we were so happy that this fireman just decided, hey, this is theirs. Wasn't i got to bring it to them. Isn't that great? So we have the, uh, so now, the, the original one that I have, when we had this big celebration, the 10th anniversary of the Monitor, uh, the U.S. Navy, uh, they, we had admirals and politicians and all sorts of people uh, 
at this could. street celebration. Yes, I was at that street celebration, by the way, and in fact, Neighborhoods Today did a bit of a show on that. I remember that we were down there. But go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, so anyway, uh, they ordered uh, replicas. So we had a lot of foundries in Greenpoint at that time. So I went to this foundry on McGinnis Boulevard toward past Greenpoint Avenue. I don't recall the name of it, but I have it in some of the files I right. have. And he, he made us uh, out of aluminum. He made a complete, perfect Repli replicas. Is that right? And of course it was sprayed with gold, like uh, bronze. Right. And it looks like the original. Is it know. in place today? Uh, it's supposed to be on the uh, Pete Cemento trucking terminal, oh, yes. which is the, the building to where the Continental Line Works was that that's, built the monitor. That's right. Now, that's so the Quay replica Street. is that's there. That's on Quay Street, right? Yeah. That's on Quay. Yeah. yeah. The replica is there. The replica. Because we're afraid that if we put the original one there, that'll be gone we'll again. Up in Connecticut again. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right. So. so, question for you. You have the original. Yes, I have the Under original. lock and key. Well, it's a <laughs> safe. It's a safe place. Very good. Yeah. Ralph, you know, that there's a, this is so great to uh, reminisce about a town that we both love. Yes. Okay, because Greenpoint does have a lot of history and a lot of wonderful people and a lot of great stories. We'd appreciate it greatly if you came back sometime and we explored this again because you know so many things about Greenpoint and there are so many things that are interesting for anybody in Brooklyn or anybody that's interested in what happens in a community over a period of years. We thank you very much for being with us. We thank Ralph Carano, the editor of the Greenpoint Gazette, for being with us today. And for Neighborhoods Today, I'm Dick Mahan, and thank you for watching.